We learned something about the gradient of the scalar field, but what does it mean? What actually the interpretation and the applications of the gradient? Well, probably intuitively you could think that gradient that something is changing, so there is some you know, gradient of color you might have you know, heard, or gradient of concentration, but we can define it quite formally, and let's do it. So the direction of the gradient, which is a vector, and which can be different in different point, it shows a direction in which this scalar field, F, increases fastest. So that's true as long as the gradient is not zero there, at, the, at that point. So that is a formal way to say that something is changing. So it shows you a direction of fastest change for the given point, and a given scalar field. And its magnitude shows the rate of change in that direction. So let's see that kind of more directly. So let's consider a directional derivative of that scalar field in the direction of a unit vector list, any unit vector. So, and we can use the definition of the directional derivative and also of the scalar product. So we can write that a directional derivative of that scalar field in the direction of this unit vector E is the magnitude of the gradient in the direction times cosine. And we can see that if we have a general case where we have a gradient at that point P and we have a unit vector and an angle between them, then actually for that to be as large as possible, the cosine has to be 1, that means that the direction of the gradient is the same as the direction where we want to compute this directional derivative with. So the rate of change will be maximum if we move along the gradient. So that will be the maximum rate of change. And, by the way, the unit vector here can be described as the gradient of f over its magnitude. So that's an intuitive explanation why the gradient gives a direction of fastest change, but we can also do a bit of a more graphical, which is better to develop intuition and to understand the relationship between the scalar and the vector fields. So let's think that this scalar field defines a lever curve, lever curves, so the curves of constant values. So for every point in time, in, in space, right, if it's a space uh, scalar field, where this function have particular value, we'll just draw a line which can be con continuous or, or not continuous. So for example like that. So that is the level curves or either lines, so values of constant, different constant values of the scalar field F. So we can say that here F is constant. And then the gradient will be defined at every point as an arrow, as a direction, and also magnitude. So, for example, here we have the gradient
of f at a given point. And at different points, the gradient will have, in general, both different direction and different magnitude. And you can see here that the denser are the level curves, the large is the gradient. And you can really think of this as a topography, as an elevation map. So you have two summits, and in between them there is a valley, and you go down, then you go up. And of course you go fastest to go down, is to go just straight down from the, from the top of the hill. Or you can think of this as the electric field, where the gradient will be related to the electric field, and you'll see this soon um, in this uh, course unit. And then the level curves will be the electric potential. So that's an extremely useful way to depict what is happening with the electric fields or with any other vector fields. But let's look at other meanings. So as I briefly mentioned, the local minima and maxima are related to the values of the gradient, which is zero. So gradient is zero at the, at the exact peak of, of your uh, hill at the summit. But it's only an astronaut sufficient condition. It also can be zero at the saddle point where you have maximum in one direction and minimum in the other direction, which you have seen probably in the previous parts of the engineering mathematics uh, last, last um, academic year. And it is always perpendicular to the level curves because it's the fastest way you can change from a given value to the uh, next value of the scalar field. Yes, and uh, the longer the arrow, the faster is the change. In 3D, you can also do it, but it's a bit more tricky, because instead of level curves, we'll have surfaces. But what we want to do is to do something practical again. We can use the gradient to compute normals to uh, curves. And also services, but in this case, let's look only at the uh, curve for time being. So we say that a vector is normal to the uh, curve at a given point if it is perpendicular to the tangent uh, of that curve. So you have a curve and you have the tangent at this point P, and the normal will be perpendicular to that tangent. So this is tangent, and this is normal for the given curve. And in 3D it's very similar, but instead of having a normal to a tangent, you have to have normals to all tangents at a given point, because in surface you have multiple directions you can put your tangent to. Again, example. Let's look at the equation which describes a circle. Well, that's, that's a circle. And we want to find a normal vector at some point to that circle. So we want to find that uh, normal that direction. Not necessarily unit normal, just normal direction. And we are told specifically which point we want to consider. And we know the equation describes the circle. How to do it? Well, first let's actually check that this point belongs to the circle. So to do it we just substitute that point again as x equals 3 and y equals 3 into our equation and see if it holds. 
and indeed it does. And then we see that the circle is actually an example of a level curve or a contour of some constant value. In this case it's 2. And we want to find a vector which is perpendicular to the curve at this point. And as we've seen, the gradient is a natural choice here. So let's just find what the gradient to this uh, curve is. So we use the gain definition. So we have the f of x and y, which is x minus 2 squared plus y minus 2 squared. And we use the definition of the gradient to find this normal vector. So it's 2D, so we have only two components of the vector, of the gradient. Uh, and if we compute this, we'll see that it is 2x minus 2 plus 2y minus 2. And at the point p equals 3, 3, uh, which is again, this is x, this is y, we will see that the gradient of this uh, scalar field is 2 times 1 plus 2 times 1. That is, if you write it in the component notation, coordinate notation is 2, 2. And that is the answer. So you can now say that this is normal to the circle f x y equals 2 at point p. And if you want to depict it again, let's just do a little um, sketch. So you have your cartoon of the circle. So you have the x and y. The center is at 2. And at at 3, you have the, the normal, which is given by this gradient. So that's at the point P. So that is effectively is the answer to that question. And later we'll move on to explore other differential operators.